Hello hockey fans and welcome back to another video. Wayne Gretzky's career with the Edmonton Oilers was nothing short of groundbreaking. After all, the Great One scored over 1,600 points in under 700 NHL games with the team, rewrote the league's record books, won multiple individual awards every single season, and lifted the Stanley Cup on four different occasions, all before his 28th birthday. Viewing his entire tenure in Alberta is certainly astonishing, but when you dig deeper and take a closer look at each of these seasons individually, you realise just how much they all stood out from the crowd compared to the rest of the players in the National Hockey League. I mean, Gretzky set the single-season goals record a whole four years before setting the assists and points record, and he didn't even win the Stanley Cup in either of those years. But which of these seasons was his greatest? Which one stands out as the best of a great bunch? Well, in today's video, we're going to try and figure it out as we attempt to rank Wayne Gretzky's 10 seasons with the Edmonton Oilers. Now, in order to rank each of these seasons from absolutely incredible, standout, one of the best seasons in the league, the great one, this is what made him get that nickname, all the way down to still very strong, potentially league leading, but certainly not his best work compared to the other incredible seasons he's had, I have created myself a handy dandy tier maker list. I have all 10 seasons that Wayne Gretzky played with the Edmonton Oilers here, annotated each of them with the season that I'm referring to, so it's a little bit easier for you guys to keep track of what's going on, and we should be able to rank these seasons and see which one I think is the best. Now, I would imagine that the first question some of you have is, Odd Man Rush, Wayne Gretzky only played nine seasons in the NHL with the Edmonton Oilers. Well, you're right. However, I decided to add a 10th season, one to round it up and make it 10 different seasons, because he did play 10 seasons with the Oilers, but I also included his rookie year in the WHA, which was the year before the Oilers merged into the NHL, and Gretzky became a rookie in the NHL. So, nine NHL seasons, one WHA season. We should be able to, to differentiate between the few, so it should be fine. Now, before we actually get started, let me just take you through the different tiers that I've established. We start off with the standard tier. This is kind of his lowest productive seasons, the, the seasons where he won the least amount of awards. But it was kind of the standard that he set for the rest of the decade. That's what's going in the standard category. Then the impressive category is kind of, it's better than the standard, not quite as not quite as base as the standard season that he had, but still a very good season. It might not have been his best season, but it wasn't his worst season. Then we have league leading, which he may have led the league in a lot of different things, maybe, maybe led the league in assists or points or goals, which he did most of his years in Edmonton, but it's not quite a record-breaking season, which is the next one. It's kind of, that's the one right underneath, kind of looking at the, the year he, he set the new goals record or the new points and assists record, his, his playoff records and things like that. That, that record-breaking season is like, these were absolutely incredible seasons, but they weren't the great one season, which is the best season that he had that decade. So, But I think we should just get started with this, folks. We have the 10 different seasons here, and I think the best place to start is with Wayne Gretzky's season in the WHA, his rookie year as a pro hockey player, the 1978-79 WHA season. Now, it's important to mention that he was a, a rookie for the team. He'd been with the Indianapolis Racers briefly the year before. He gets moved to the Edmonton Oilers, and this season was incredibly productive for him. He produced 43 goals and 104 points in 72 WHA regular season games, with a further 20 points in 13 playoff games, and was awarded the WHA's Rookie of the Year as well. So, compared to some of the other seasons he's had that we're going to look into later in this episode, you sit there and think... Wow, a 17, 18-year-old player in arguably the second best hockey league in North America and arguably the entire world put up an 100-point season as a teenager. So I think we're going to start by putting the 1978-79 season as the standard. This is where he set things up for the rest of the decade. So that's, that's our standard. That's the base standard that he had. Now, we need to obviously have a look at some of the other seasons that he produced throughout this the, the, his time in Edmonton and kind of... I feel like it's easier to pick out the the kind of impressive and standard ones, but when we get to the league leading, the record breaking, and certainly the great one season, we're going to have a little bit more difficulty. Now, the other season I would like to look at is the 87-88 season, which was his final season with the Edmonton Oilers. During this year, he scored 40 goals, 149 points in 64 games. He also scored 43 points in 19 playoff games. He also won his fourth Stanley Cup out of the four that he did this decade. Got his second Con Smythe trophy and his second All-Star team appearance. I'm kind of unsure where to put this season, let's be honest here, folks, because... 
He won a Conn Smythe Trophy. He won his fourth Stanley Cup. He absolutely dominated the playoffs when he made it there. He was named a second team All-Star though, which is something that I want to mention because there were two seasons he was named a second team All-Star in the NHL. The first being his rookie year in the 1979-80 NHL season and the second being the uh, the 87-88 season, the one we're talking about right now. I feel like the fact that he didn't produce as many points in the regular season compared to some of the other years, for context, it was the lowest points he registered in a season since his rookie year in the NHL. I'm just looking at my stats down here. I've got all the numbers here for me. I feel like despite winning that fourth Stanley Cup, despite winning his second Conn Smythe Trophy as the playoff MVP, I feel like that's going to be an impressive season for him, but it's not a league-leading, record-breaking, the great one season. Obviously, league-leading, he might have been leading in some of the stats in the NHL at the time, but I feel like the 87-88 season has to be an impressive year, but it wasn't a league-leading or a record-breaking year, but it was certainly better than the standard that he'd set. Put him there, it's an impressive year. You know, it's a very impressive year, but compared to some of the other seasons he had, it wasn't quite there. And that goes to show you just how incredible of a player Wayne Gretzky was. The a 140 40 point year in 64 games and a 43 point season in 19 playoff games winning his fourth stanley cup and his second playoff mvp award that's just an impressive season for you that's the first two that i found so far i feel like those are good places to start off now the next season i want to look at is his first year in the nhl his rookie year during the 1979 1980 season he didn't win the calder memorial trophy because ray bork won it um it's interesting i looked this up yesterday because i was thinking how come Wayne Gretzky didn't win the Calder Memorial Trophy for Rookie of the Year? It's because he'd played that one season in the WHA during the 78-79 season. They counted it as a pro season, and they said that because he'd played that year, he wasn't eligible for the Calder Memorial Trophy, which I find a bit ridiculous. But in this rookie season, the 79-80 season, he scored 51 goals and 137 points in 79 games. He scored three points in three playoff games, so not the best postseason for him compared to the rest of the league he also won the Hart memorial trophy for league mvp and he won the lady bing trophy actually which is really interesting he got 21 penalty minutes on the entire year he wins the lady bing trophy which is the first and i believe only time in his career that he won the lady bing it was during his rookie season in the nhl so i feel like his rookie nhl season it's a step up from his season in the WHA. It's an impressive year. Yeah, he didn't win the Stanley Cup. He didn't win the Conn Smythe, but he gets his first Hart Memorial. He doesn't have a good season in the playoffs. I, I'm kind of torn with this one, whether to put it as the standard or as impressive. I feel like maybe the 1979-80 season, his rookie year, should be a standard season because he goes on to win plenty of Hart trophies. He goes on to be a first team all-star in many years after this. I feel like that could be the right one for him. So you know what? The 1979-80 season, I'm also going to put that as the standard. We've got several other seasons. We've got seven seasons left to go here. And there's lots of them very much in the middle of the decade, kind of between the 81-82 season all the way to the 84-85 season. There's not really much separating each of these seasons in terms of the awards that he won and the points that he scored. There's a couple of records set there, but... I feel like I want to move on to the 1980-81 season next. I've obviously been going in order except for the 87-88 season. The 1980-81 season, his sophomore year in the NHL, Wayne Gretzky was 20 years old at the time and he scored 55 goals and 164 points in 80 NHL regular season games, but he also added 21 points in nine playoff games. So he's over two points a game throughout the entirety of his playoff run with the Oilers. Of course, the Oilers as a team, they still weren't quite at the point where they were ready to, to dominate the NHL they were still missing a few pieces or a couple of their players needed to mature a little bit and kind of find their game at the NHL level but I think it's safe to say at that point Wayne Gretzky did not need to find his game he had found it and he had found it in stride ladies and gentlemen he also won the Art Ross trophy he won the Hart Memorial and was named a first team all-star in the NHL for the first time in his NHL career so looking at Wayne Gretzky's 1980-81 season it was a step up from his rookie year he scored another almost 30 points in one more game so he really stepped up in that sophomore year in the NHL and his playoff numbers were far better. However, at the same time, he didn't go as deep into the playoffs. He didn't win a Stanley Cup that year. I don't think you can say that he had his best year if he didn't win the Stanley Cup and the Conn Smythe. I feel like those two are kind of deal breakers. And I know I've put the 88, or the 87, I should say, the 87-88 season down in the impressive category because of it. But 
the, the kind of three factors that I'm using to determine this, I probably should have mentioned this at the beginning of the video, shouldn't I? How many points he scored that season, how many awards he won, and how well the Edmonton Oilers did as a team overall are kind of the three things I'm looking at here. So I think I'm going to put the 1980-81 season as impressive. I think it was an impressive season for Wayne Gretzky. He built on his rookie year in the NHL, but it still wasn't quite that league-leading record-breaking. It certainly wasn't his best season in the NHL. If you're comparing the two that are in the impressive category, some of you might disagree that I put those two seasons level, but I feel like... The fact that he didn't, he wasn't as productive personally on the on the score sheet as seasons passed in the 87-88 season means he's there. And with the 80-81 season, because he didn't win as many awards, he didn't go deep in the Stanley Cup playoffs, I feel like those two are kind of similar and they interject in the same place. Now, the next season I want to look at is the continuation of the season prior, is the 1981-82 NHL season. Now, the big big part of this season was the fact that Wayne Gretzky broke the single season goals record in NHL history, 92 goals on the season, 212 points in 80 games. So he goes from a 137 point rookie year to 164 point sophomore year to a 212 point season in his third year in the NHL. He's 21, 22 years old at this point, and he's putting up 92 goals in a season. He also got 12 points in five playoff games. He won his first Rocket Richard, as you would expect. He won the Art Ross, the Hart Memorial, and the Ted Lindsay Award. So the league's leading goal scorer, the league's leading point scorer, the MVP of the season as told by the media, and the MVP of the season as told by the players. These four awards he would win several, well, basically every single year for the next three or four years. I feel like the 81-82 season, obviously, given the fact that I have got a record-breaking um, category here. I feel like he's got to go record breaking. Like compared to the rest of the numbers he scored throughout his career, he, I mean, he had an 87 goal season, he had a 71 goal season, 73 goal season, but a 92 goal season just really takes it above and beyond for me. And the fact that he had the second most points that he scored throughout his entire NHL career that season too, there's not many players that get close to 92 goals or have ever got close to 92 goals in an NHL season. He basically takes the big four of the league trophies. So I feel like that just justifies and that the fact that he scored 90 goals that year justifies that he's sitting up at the top in the record breaking category because there's only one season that's going to go in the great one category let's be honest folks now the next season i want to look at is the 82 83 nhl season we're kind of going chronologically now i probably should have gone chronologically the whole way through but the 87 88 season was one that jumped out to me so you know it's my channel i'm going to do it the way that i want but the 82 83 nhl season was a bit of a step back for Wayne Gretzky in the regular season. He stepped up tremendously in the uh, postseason. And to say that this is a step back, he scored 196 points that season. And that's a down season for him compared to the year prior. Like, wow. <laughs> what an incredible, like, stint with a team. 71 points, 196, uh, 71 goals, I should say. 196 points in 80 regular season games. 38 points in 16 playoff games. So once again, two points a game in the postseason, but they go much deeper that year. They still don't win their Stanley Cup, which is a bit of a shame. It's kind of the last award that Wayne Gretzky needs at this point. He's only four years into his NHL career. However, he does manage to pick up the Rocket Richard, the Art Ross, the Hartman memorial and the ted Lindsay again so i feel like the 82 83 nhl season should be a league leading season it wasn't a record breaking year he didn't score 91 goals didn't score over 200 points he didn't win the stanley cup he didn't get a championship he didn't win the playoff mvp but he put up a very very good season that was leading the league in goals points and he was the playoff and the the regular season mvp as voted for by the media and the players so i feel like the 82 83 season is a good place to kind of slot him in uh, as the league leading award is kind of very very good better than impressive far better than standard but it wasn't quite record breaking and it wasn't quite the great one either next up we have the 1983-84 nhl season which is of course the first year that wayne gretzky finally won the stanley cup yeah i feel like this is a good place to move on to because he had a very good year he i say he had a bounce back year compared to the year prior he had a fantastic season. It wasn't the great one, but it was a fantastic season nonetheless. He scored 87 goals and 205 points in 74 games, uh, regular season games that is. So he missed six games in the season and he still scored over 200 points, which is absolutely incredible. He had 35 points in 19 playoff games, which is a bit of a reduction compared to the season prior. 
However, he got his hands on the Stanley Cup, so I don't think he's going to complain, if you ask me. He also, once again, got the Rocket Richard, the Art Ross, the Hart Memorial, and the Ted Lindsay Award. This season, I feel like it could be on that plateau of a record-breaking season because he won his first cup that year. He put up solid numbers. The second highest goals in his NHL career were in that season. His 92-goal season was the only other year that he he topped 80 goals throughout his career, let alone 87. I, I'm really torn between this one because part of me wants to say record-breaking, but then I could put so many other different seasons in record-breaking. So I've, I've got to say the 1983-84 season is going to have to be a league-leading season again because he led the league in goals, points, was the MVP once again. He built on his 82-83 NHL season. However, he didn't break any huge, incredible... NHL records in terms of goals or assists or points. He won his first Stanley Cup, which gets him some bonus points in my opinion. But just to be incredibly nitpicky, the fact that he he wasn't as productive in the playoffs, he scored 35 points in 19 games as opposed to 38 points in 16 games the season before. I'm being incredibly nitpicky here, but when you've got 10 seasons as incredible as this, you kind of have to, let's be honest. So I'm going to put the 83-84 season in the league leading category because it wasn't quite record-breaking, but it was certainly better than impressive. So the next season I want to look at is the 1985-86 NHL season because this was another record-breaking season for the great one because he set a new NHL record for both the most assists and the most points in a single NHL season. The interesting thing about this season though that when you delve deeper into the individual years it kind of surprised me a little bit. Wayne Gretzky only scored 52 goals that season. That's one of his worst goal-scoring years throughout his entire tenure in Edmonton. There are only two seasons where he scored less goals, and that was his rookie year and his final year in the 87-88 season. So, obviously, scoring 50 goals in the NHL in just one NHL season is an absolutely incredible achievement, and not many players are able to do that now. Obviously, the 80s was a different time, a high-scoring era, the highest-scoring era in NHL history. The thing that saved this season, well, not necessarily saved the season, but the thing that really made this season stand out is the fact that he got 163 assists that year for 215 points, ladies and gentlemen. 52 goals, 163 assists, 215 points on the year in 80 games he also had 19 points in 11 playoff games he won the art ross and the hart memorial however he didn't win the stanley cup he didn't win the rocket richard he didn't win the ted lindsay either so he was named the mvp by the media wasn't named the MV mvp by the players which is very interesting i think the fact that i do have the record breaking category he may not have had the success in the playoffs that he might have had in other years but you've got to put the 85-86 season in the record-breaking category. Some of you might argue that deserves to be in the great one category, the, the very top, because, you know, he scored 215 points in 80 regular season games. However, his team didn't go as deep into the playoffs. He didn't win a Con Smythe Award. He didn't win the Stanley Cup. I feel like that's the best place to put him purely because it was a record-breaking season for him. That means we're left with just two different seasons to look at now, folks. We have the 1984-85 NHL season and the 1986-87 NHL season. Now, as you can see on both the images, he won a Stanley Cup in both of those years. And I've got to be honest, these two seasons were pretty good years. However, one, in my opinion, stands out far higher than the other. So I'm going to go with the penultimate choice before I justify my decision for the great one at the top. And I think I've got a good good argument as to why I think it's the top one. I'm going to look at next the 1986-87 NHL season, which of course was his third Stanley Cup championship year with the Edmonton Oilers, his penultimate year with the team, and it was still a very impressive year for him. He was coming off his 215-point season with the Oilers during the prior 85-86 season. During the 86-87 season, though, he scored 62 goals, that's more like it, Wayne Gretzky, and 183 points in 79 regular season games. He had 34 points in 21 playoff games, though. And he also won the Rocket Richard, the Art Ross, the Hart Memorial, and the Ted Lindsay. So he, he took all four of the trophies home again with him. He puts up an 183-point season, which I've got to say is one of his weaker seasons in terms of overall points. But the fact that he, he won... Um, he got all four awards again. The fact that he managed to get the Stanley Cup in, in his possession again. Um, I, I think this is a really good season for Wayne Gretzky. I don't think it's a record-breaking season because he didn't actually break any any uh, statistical categories in terms of goals, assists, points, anything like that. He obviously broke some records, I would imagine. Um, I don't have them with me at hand. So I think the 1986-87 season should go in the league-leading category. 
like I said, not quite a record-breaking season for him, but I feel like it's got to be a league-leading one. It's far better than impressive because he won the Cup and all four trophies. He got the Stanley Cup in this season, all four individual awards, and yeah, the t how well the team did does have a bearing on it. However, it is looking at the career of Wayne Gretzky and his stint in Edmonton, not the Edmonton Oilers stint as a whole. So that leaves one season, ladies and gentlemen. The one season that I think Wayne Gretzky was his best season during his 10 years as a member of the Edmonton Oilers, and that goes to the 1984-85 NHL season. Some of you might be arguing, well, that's the obvious choice, given how well the team played and the players around him. Some of you might be thinking, hang on a second, he didn't break any records this year. He didn't put up his career-high points or anything like that. So his numbers, let's start with his numbers first. 73 goals, which is the third highest goals he scored in his NHL career. Not record-breaking, wasn't an 87-goal season like he had during the prior 83-84 season, but he scored 73 goals. He had 208 points that year too, which is also the third highest points that he ever scored in the NHL. So third highest goals of his career, third highest points of his career in 80 regular season games. However, 47 points in 18 playoff games. That's one of the big factors as to why I chose this season as the best season for Wayne Gretzky. Helped them win their second Stanley Cup, and this is the season that Wayne Gretzky earned his first Conn Smythe trophy, which obviously goes to the playoff MVP. With 47 points in 18 playoff games, you can't really be surprised that he won the playoff MVP. And he also wins all four awards as well. So if I put it up in the great one category, and then let's compare it to the other seasons that we have below. So the 84-85 season, compare it to the 81-82 season in the record-breaking category. So the 81-82 season, scored more goals, registered more points. He won all four trophies. He wasn't as good in the playoffs because the team didn't go as deep. And he didn't win the Stanley Cup or the Conn Smythe. Compare it to the 85-86 season, then you've got he scored less goals, more assists and points. He had less playoff games, far less points, and he only won two awards. He won the Art Ross and the Hart Memorial. So you could make an argument that maybe the 81-82 season is closer to the 84-85 season compared to the 85-86 season. I'm throwing out loads of different numbers. I hope you're keeping up, folks. But when you compare the 84-85 season to the two record-breaking seasons, yeah, obviously the goals were more in the 81-82 season, but he didn't win the Cup, didn't win the Conn Smythe, didn't win several awards compared to the 85-86 season. So the team did better in the 84-85 season. He may have done better personally in some of these other seasons. However, I feel like his best season with the Oilers everything came together and I said that I was mainly looking at his individual numbers and his individual stats and his individual points which is true but I feel like how well the team does or how well he gets to prove how good he is in the playoffs has some bearing on that or quite a big bearing on that as well because let's be honest the difference between his point totals from when he really made it into the NHL we're talking 215 points was his highest and if we take from his third season onwards for example for the like five seasons right in the middle of the decade he averaged he got between 180 and 215 points a year there really isn't that much that's separating them on on the on the stat sheet however the fact that he won the con Smythe, he won his stanley cup the second stanley cup of his career and he got all those individual awards as well i feel like that's deserving of being the greatest season that wayne gretzky had during his 10-year tenure with the edmonton oilers you, uh, that is certainly up for debate. This is purely my opinion here, folks. So some of you might think, no, I, I don't agree with that. I think another season, maybe maybe the 83-84 season or the season where he broke the record for goals scored or points scored. You can certainly make an argument for all of these different seasons to be up there. However, in my opinion, in my humble British opinion, I think the 1984-85 season is the best season that Wayne Gretzky had because he put up really solid numbers with 208 points in 80 games, third highest goals scored in his career, third highest points scored in his career. He dominated the playoffs like he's never done in any other season. And we're talking about a guy that scored two points a game in the playoffs. So the fact that he was that even that step up compared to other years that he was in the playoffs... He won all four individual awards like he did in years prior, but he also won a Stanley Cup, got his team across the hurdle, the final hurdle to win that cup, and he won a Conn Smythe as the playoff MVP. Nothing could have gone better for Wayne Gretzky in that season, and that's why I rank it at the top.
And on that note, I'm going to end today's video. I thought I'd try something a little bit different this weekend, and I, I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of video. Uh, what do you guys think about my tiered list? Do you think it was good? Do you think it was bad? Do you strongly disagree with the choices that I made or the reasons why? Do let me know in the comments below. Also, if you want to see me rank Wayne Gretzky seasons with the Los Angeles Kings, or if you want me to take a look at another player's career and maybe rank that as well, their tenure with the team, do let me know in the comments below. I'm trying something different here. If you guys like it, then we'll keep doing it. If you don't, then we'll just let this, this episode or this video sit there and just kind of be lost to the sands of time. But thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Video, please feel free to like, subscribe, share, or watch some of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye. A big thank you to Carl Fairbank, Chris Gadsby, Connor B, John Plomin, Jordan Whitehead, Roman from London, and Worthless Pieces for helping support this video via Patreon. If you too want to help support the channel a little bit further and get a shout out at the end of every future video, make sure you head over to patreon.com/oddmanrush and become a patron today.